Jesus Christ is risen today. Verses 3 and 4. Please stand.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled to Poseidon and reached Pamphylia, and proclaimed the word at Pergamon. They went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for, they, for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them. And how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy sea, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride were born from her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be with his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain. For the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord. Last Sunday, 
last Sunday's gospel, which was um, John chapter 20, uh, John chapter 10, uh, verses 27 to 30. And then, of course, the responsorial psalm and the second reading reminded us that God is our shepherd. And we are secure in his hand. And he, he loves us. He loves us and we are safe in his hand. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. And no one can take them out of my hand. And that is John chapter 10, verse 27. But this Sunday, our theme will be loving like Jesus. Loving like Jesus. Is it something possible to do? I think it is. And, and you can see the passage we read today from the Gospel according to John was John chapter 13. Can you, do you remember what happened in that, in that chapter? What Jesus did in that chapter. It was the chapter about the Last Supper. And you know how he began? He said, He knew that the time for his passing from this world to the Father has come. And then, verse 2 said, He loved those who were his own in the world and loved them to the end. So before the Last Supper, he poured water. On the, on, the, on the basin and wash their feet and say to them, what you see me do for you, you should also do for one another. And then, uh, as they were, you know, eating, the food was ready. And he said that one of them is going to betray him. And he was asked, who is that? You know, it's, you know somebody... Uh, Peter motioned to John to ask him, and he said the one he would dip the food and give is the one. And the moment the guy received what was given to him, and remember that at that last supper, it was not just ordinary meal. He instituted the Eucharist, what we do at every mass in that last supper. So Judas actually received the Eucharist without a clean heart. Because he was planning evil in his heart at the time. So the moment he received, and the scripture said, the night fell. He went out into the night. You see, when one walks out from God, the person finds himself into the arms of a devil. Yeah, when one leaves God, you, you give yourself, you one who leaves God, who turns back on God, puts himself into the hand of that, uh, demonic powers, and it's so bad. So anyway, but Judas was one of those who washed his feet. But then he went on to tell them, he said, you know, like every good parent does this. You know, parents will tell their children things that they should know in case if he's no longer here, or she's no longer here, wise and loving mother or father will make things clear to their children before he or she dies. So, you know, you give your password so that, you know, your laptop, when you are gone, your children can still use them. And, you know, you, you share things out so that they will not be fighting over things when you are gone. So the Lord, took that moment because he knew to give them his will, his last testament. And what was his last testament? What was his, his last will? Love That's right. He said, it's love. He said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. And then he went on to say, as I have loved you, you should also love one another. St. Augustine wrote a commentary on the Gospel of John. He was reflecting on that. He said, what is new about that commandment? 
because it was already given in the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 says, Love your neighbor as yourself. So now, what is new about that commandment? Why the Lord said, I give you a new commandment? Hmm? Can you think of it? What is new about it? What is new is this phrase, as I have loved you. If you look at the one in the Old Testament, it didn't say, as I have loved you. It said, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, and you know that that is limited, some kind of. Because if you don't love yourself the right way, you're going to do the same to other people. So, but if you love people the way Jesus loved them, it cannot but be right. It will always be right. Because God is God and God loves us in the best way. So he said, Love one another as I have loved you. Now, the question is, the one million dollar question is, how does Jesus love so that we can love the way he loves? How does he love? Eh? That's right. He loves truly and completely. And his love endures. He doesn't say, hey, I'm going to love you for three months and then you're on your own after that. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, I'm loving you for 20 years and then if, you are, if your hair turns gray, well, you're on your own. I don't love you anymore. I'm going to find another woman. And that's not Jesus. But people do that and that's wrong. So anyway, Jesus loves truly. He loves completely. And it's not unto the end. And that love was not just mere words. You know, like people will say, you know, good things they want you to hear, but they don't really mean it. But Jesus meant it. And he showed it by dying on the cross for us. Greater love than this, no man has for one to lay down his life for his friends. And that's it. That's what the Lord did. So, the question is, is, is it possible for human beings to love like God? Can we actually love like God? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. Do we have an example? <laughs> Alright, you know, when someone is telling you something, asking you to do something, but that person cannot do that, you know the person doesn't have much, it doesn't have a lot of point to it. But if somebody is telling you something that he has done, so the question is, if love is possible, why is it that it's difficult to love? You know, some of us will say, well, there are some people who are really nasty, who are really difficult to love. Well, remember, he loved us while we were still sinners. He didn't say, hey, you guys, until you get clean up, and you're really good people, then I'll love you. That's not what Jesus did. He loved us the way we are. He, the scriptures say He loved us while we were still sinners. And that is Romans chapter 5, verse 8. That means that we'll do the same. And the other thing unique about Jesus' love is He loved the Jews and the Gentiles. That means He loves everybody. He was not selective. He didn't say, well, unless you are six, foot, six, uh, six feet five, then I'll love you. If you are anything short, I don't love you. He didn't say that. He said, young and old, tall and short, fat and thin, I love you all. And, and that's how our love would be. And so, you all already agree that it's possible for human beings to do. And truly, in our history, we know like this first reading we read today from Acts of the Apostles was a story of people like us, Paul and Barnabas and uh, John Mark. They went on the first missionary journey. They went to Antioch in the sea there. While they were there, some people received the good news, were happy about it. But then things changed. The people who got mad and incited violence on the apostles and chased them out of town. 
So they left Antioch in Pisidia and went on to Lystra in there, which was like a, you know a colony for the retired soldiers. In our time, it would be like a veteran village. So, and it was about 100 miles away from the first place they preached. Guess what happened? The enemies of the gospel pursued them, followed them to that place, and incited violence. In fact, they beat them to the poor. You know, they stoned Paul, thinking that he was dead. They left him, and the disciples came, and then they prayed over him, and realized he was alive. So he got up and went back into the city. And see the word he said today. <clears throat> and you find it in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 22. He said, and, and, uh, and Alexander, who read it so beautifully, said, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. So that means that love is not easy. Sometimes it comes with a cost. But we don't we don't count the cost. We do what is right. In fact, one uh, Dominican Master General uh, once put it this way, he said, the world is waiting for those who love it. The world is waiting for those who love it. If you don't love the world, if you don't love any man, if you don't love men and women, if you don't love anybody, do not preach to them. What should you do? Preach to yourself. That's what he said. And then, moving on, the key thing that we need about to know about this love is that we can see in the life of other people how they did it. You know, take example, Peter and John and Paul, they ended up in Rome because they want to give testimony to Jesus. They want to show love to others. And their way of showing love to others is to tell them about the one who died and rose from the dead, the one who saved them. So, in order to give that testimony to Jesus, they gave their life for it. Both of them were martyred in Rome, like countless other martyrs. For instance, Paul or Peter was crucified upside down because he was not a Roman citizen. Paul was beheaded a year after Peter was crucified. He was a Roman citizen. They couldn't crucify him. And just think about even nearer to our time, people like Saint Diana Beretta Mola. An Italian woman who was a doctor and Maximilian called me. But I was in Rome at the time when Gianna was a, a canonized. And what did she do? She was a mother and a wife. She was pregnant and she has a tumor in her womb. And the diagnosis was that the, the tumor um, that she needs to abort the baby. She needs to let the baby go and so that her life can be saved, she can receive all the chemo and the, whatever they do. But she elected to save the life of the baby. She carried the baby and allowed that to be surgically removed. But by the time they get to do it, it was far gone. She gave birth to the baby and she died afterwards. That baby is now 60 years old, he's no longer a baby, he's a man. So, but she gave her life that her child may live. The same was the story of a man, who I'm sure most of you know his story, Maximilian Kolbe. Maximilian Kolbe was a Polish priest of um, Milesia Maria Immaculata. And he was among those in concentration camp. And what the Red Army did, you know, the Nazis, what they did was they were starving people to death, but they, they used them like, like instruments, you know, they work all day. So what they do is, because the food is in short supply, each day they will come and look around. If they think you, are, you don't look strong, they get you out. 
to the gas chamber, kill you off, so that others will have enough food. So on that left foot, they came and they pointed to a man. Once they point at you, you have to stand up. It's the end of the story for you. So they pointed to the man, the man cried. The man said, what about my wife and my eight children? Who will take care of them? So that man, the priest, he stood up. He said, I was I'll swap with him. You dare not talk to those red animals. But the man, he braved it because he loved like Jesus. He stood up and he swapped. And, and he said, swap. So he died in the place of a man. And those things, those stories may sound far-fetched, but in the nearer home, most parents give their life for their children. They suffer. They hold two or three jobs to make sure that their children are well taken care of. And it's very important to be appreciative of that. Or think about the work of some people like the first responders, remember September 11th, that many firefighters, they died trying to save people. And that is the love like Jesus. And by the way, 99% of those firemen who died, guess what their religion was? They are all Catholics. That's right. So, what is good for the kids? It's good for the gander. And if someone else can do it, we can do it. And now, what is the force that impels people to live love like Jesus? It is the love of Christ. See, knowing that He died for us makes us be ready to live, not for ourselves, but to live, not in a selfish manner, but to live for Him who died and rose for us. So at the end of, at the end, at the evening of life, when all is said and done, what comes to those who live their life that way? Who didn't live selfishly? Who gave of themselves to their community, to their family, to people who need them? What is the second reading today tells us, and that is the book of Revelation, chapter 21, second to the last chapter of that book, beautiful book. It said that I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away. And then he said, Behold God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning or wailing or pain for the old order has passed away. In Christ Jesus, we are new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 And how can we do that? Who can help us to reach that ideal? Who better than the mother of God can teach us to love like our son loves. And so in this month of Mary, month of May, we pray, Mary our mother, pray for us to love like Jesus. Amen? Amen. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God.
love one another out of love for all people. We now bring their needs before the Lord. and the silence of our heart, especially for the souls in purgatory. Father, we thank you for this time of worship. As you answer our prayers, deepen our love for you and for one another. Heavenly Father, we pray especially for all our brothers and sisters in the recent shooting in Buffalo, New York. Grant eternal repose to the ten people who have died and healing to the three that were wounded but were still alive and bring conversion to the hearts of those who heal. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be acceptable to our God, the Almighty Father.
of me.
traditional slave grand feast in our days in your mercy keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the
She is our tete nature's solitary boast. And it's also a period of renewal of new life, you know, as you see things grow in the garden. And through Mary, the world began a new, a new life. She was the mother, uh, she's the mother of the one who is life. And in the ancient um, pagan cultures, like in Greece and Rome, they worship goddess, like Artemis and goddess Flora. You know, they attribute to them as the, the power behind the things blooming and growing. So, but you know, what is the truth about Artemis, about Flora, about Apollos? What do you think about them? What one thing they have in common? They are not, they do not exist. That's it. So, <clears throat> what a better way to celebrate spring than honor Mary, the mother of life. And finally, I'm so happy we're going to do the youth meeting today. So I would like to invite all our young people in the church to stand. And uh, those of us who are no longer, who are not so young, we shall pray for them. <laughs> so all the young people in the church and the youth director, can you may you stand? So let us pray for them. God Almighty, bless our young people. May they serve, grow in wisdom and in grace. As they do their first meeting today, may be awesome time of growth, of friendship, and above all, help them to grow in love and knowledge of you. And through them, Grant us a better future through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> so, if you feel led to join them, you know, please come to see and encourage them. I would like our youth to be the best in the city. And I wanted also to mention, um, as a kind of expressing my gratitude to those of you who were able to attend the morning spirituality we had yesterday. At Coyoteville, and some of our ladies were among you know the committee that see about, that saw about it, that were helping and putting things in place. So I want to thank all those who attended. And you know something that distinguished Saint Augustine there at the at the at the garden. Can you think of it? What it is that we did, and not many people did. <laughs> That's right, the more of us. We did. <laughs> we did. So if I see any lady wearing masks, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a moment and, and show her how this. She will be from St. Augustine. So, anyway, to exercise caution, abundance of faith is good, it's wise. And let, next week, I will be away, I will, I will be attending a conference on Blessed Mother. <laughs> And I want to know, I want to let you know that one of the speakers is in the forefront of um, the a flame of love. So sometime we're going to invite her, and she will come with our brother Norman to help us, you know, start our flame of love. You know, keep it going. I know that there are some um, members here, so we would like to have it, you know, stay so that you you don't have to. Be looking for a place to meet if you want to join the flame of love. I think that's about it. May we rise. The Lord be with you.